Hello and welcome to another video. So this video is going to be my review of the new Samyang um, AF135 f1.8 autofocus lens for Sony. Now disclaimer before we start, Samyang did send me this lens out for free to review it. Uh, they haven't asked me to make this video, they haven't paid me, and um, this is just solely gonna be my thoughts on the, um, on the, the Samyang 135. Uh, I have recently uh, bought the old Samyang 135 of my own money and uh, have been using that and absolutely love this lens. So this lens has um, a bit of legendary status in the Astro community. So I was really interested to see how the new one would hold up against it. But let's get into it. We'll start off with a few specs and uh, features and things like that. Then we'll get into um, sharpness, uh, comparing the corners, and then also the part that I'm most interested in is comparing these two lenses together. Now, I only shoot astrophotography, so I haven't tested this lens at all during daytime. And um, so I lent this lens to my mate, who's a really good wildlife photographer, and he's had, um, he's had a, a test with this and has given me his thoughts that I'll share with you. So we'll get cracking. Firstly then, um, the weight of it, it's just over 900 grams. The filter thread size is 82 millimeters. The minimum focus on the website is uh, 69 centimeters, but in testing, I'm getting 50 centimeters. So 50 centimeters is really short uh, minimum focus length, I, I think, for this. So you should be able to get some lovely bokeh shots with it. Um, it is weather sealed. Um, in terms of build quality, it is definitely lighter than the old one. The old one has a, a, is still plastic, has a plastic feel, but has a sort of more um, uh, robust, I would say. You, you could, feels like you could kill someone with this thing. Um, but yeah, so this, it feels, it does feel lighter, is lighter. Um, it it's, feels decently made, but it is all plastic. That's what keeps the, uh, the weight down on it, I assume. The glass on the front is absolutely huge for that uh, 1.8. And uh, it also has the, um, focus hole buttons and some custom buttons on the top of it here which uh, which allow you two different types of custom button and also has a range limiter on there as well which uh, isn't useful for astrophotography but might be useful for uh, other aspects uh, it also has the, um, the focus hole button or as it's called the astro mode button um, which was uh, originally announced uh, came out on the 24 millimeter um, f1.8 which i'm shooting on now and it is a really cool feature you basically you can set the um the focus of that to whatever you want but uh, with the astro you would set it to infinity so that the stars always in focus and then all you've got to do is hold down the button when you turn on the camera and it will auto jump the lens and jump the focus to that preset focus distance now, that is a really good feature for astrophotography but i haven't used it personally on this one because i've started using a clipping filter and the clipping filter changes the focus plane so infinity on this lens with the filter in is different to infinity on this lens with the filter out so i haven't tested it much but it is still a really cool feature um, the focusing ring is is smooth um, and and it is uh, reasonably accurate i would say I, I actually do find it easier focusing on the old one uh, there's, there's a longer throw on the old one so you can sort of fine tune it but um yeah re reasonably accurate i would say let's go to the prices so the price of this in the uk currently is 850 pound uh, which is expensive for a samyang lens but for um a 135 f1.8 the competition really is the there's the sony um, G Master, which is £1,500, and then there's the uh, Sigma 135 1.8, which is £1,100, so it's considerably cheaper than the other two. So uh, let's have a quick look at some of the um, sharpness and some of the, uh, some of the sample pictures that I've taken. And I have done um, a few videos on this already, some comparison videos. And so I will link, I will link them up here where, where it uh, relates to them because I go into a lot more depth in those other videos in the comparisons. So we are shooting a minute at, um, at 1.8. And yeah, in terms of sharpness, the, the lens is very sharp in the center. It's really impressive. Um, and, but then in the corners, there is some 
uh, there is some coma and chromatic aberration and that does reduce as you stop down the lens. So let's have a look. I've also done a video on that, testing the different f-stops. I'll link it up there for you to go into more detail. I'll also put a, a link down below of um, some TIFFs of the RAW files that I've taken with this, and so you can take a look for yourself on them. Long and short of it is, uh, it is, is decently sharp in the center. Um, the corners are not as good as the old one. Okay, so carrying on the comparison to the old one. So in terms of size, you can see the difference there. It is just a little bit bigger, um, but it is a lot a lot larger the glass on the front there with the extra stop from uh, f1.8 to f2 i believe it's a third of a stop of light and you really can tell the difference in um in this shooting at 1.8 instead of shooting at f2 with that one um in terms of the weights as i say this one's at 900 grams this one is a bit closer to a kilo so there is a little bit of difference in there um, in terms of sharpness i have done a comparison video of the two looking at the corners and again i'll i'll post that i'll link that up there um, um, but the, the long and short of it is, if I go, if you look at the uh, the corners on the 1.8, they are there or thereabouts, not quite as good as the F2. But the difference is the the new one, as you stop it down through the range F2, F3, F4, it, sh it does sharpen up nicely in the corners, whereas the old one stays basically identical um, through the corners. Uh, and I'll put a quick quick few pictures up of the of the old one now it is literally as sharp at f4 f4 f6 as it is wide open at f2 uh, and that's why this one is is really famous for uh, for being fantastic in the astro community i think the difference is that this has got ed glass so i think that this one has glass that is used on uh, telescopes high-end sort of stuff whereas i think this one has different glass on it i'm not i'm not 100 of that um, but all i am sure is that the um the old one has better corner sharpness so whether that's an issue for you or not i, I don't know um, in terms of uh, shooting through the day then um, i'll put up a few pictures that my mate took um, using this through the day he basically said that the bokeh is really nice on this the sensor in fact the sharpness around the image is is impressive um, he said it would be best suited for walk around wildlife which would be like ducks squirrels deers and bird hides uh, etc. Um, in terms of the autofocus, he said that the autofocus was um, it, it was slower compared to Sony autofocus, but that it was reasonably accurate. Uh, same thing for video. Uh, autofocus is fine and uh, good for smaller animals where you've got a bit of distance. The distance versus size is about right for horses, but wouldn't work for owls, etc. But anyway, I, I put up some um, some example pictures that he took. They, the lens is decently sharp throughout um, and the bokeh is really impressive considering. I'll stick up some sample pictures that I've taken now of this lens and um, I'll give my final thoughts on it. So my final thoughts based on should you buy the, uh, the Samyang, old Samyang 135 or the new Samyang 135. Basically, my overall thoughts are is that you should absolutely have a Samyang 135. Now, which one that you choose would be based on what you shoot. So for me, because of the price of it now, this one is about 400 quid. So because the new one has come out, it's made this really cheap. Because of the price of it, and because of the, the ridiculous sharpness corner to corner all the way through the range, I would recommend if you shoot solely Astro that you go get yourself the old Samuel 135 because it's even better value now. But if you were to shoot anything else as well as Astro, so if you shot portraits, if you did shoot animals, if you shot weddings, what have you, then this would be a much, uh, much better a version for you because you're able to shoot both with it. Um, it's it's really bright, it looks really good, um, and it's decently sharp, especially as in comparison to, I've seen review videos of it being compared to the Sony and the Sigma, and, and it holds its own, if not beats them in a lot of areas. So, so for me, you should definitely have a 135, and you should definitely get a Samyang 135, but if you shoot solely Astro, then I'd recommend the old one. If you shoot Astro and anything else, then I would recommend that you get 
the new one. So what I'll do is I'll put the, the videos um, that I've done already on this. This will be like the fourth video, I think, um, going into more depth of uh, comparing the corners of these two, for example. As I say, I'll put the, uh, the link down below where you can go and download the pictures for yourself and take a look, see what you think. Um, and, and then other than that, that's it for this video. So thank you very much for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon. Take care.